Welcome to the Bill Kelly Podcast, critical discussions in critical times. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. And welcome to the Bill Kelly Podcast, critical discussions in these critical times. I am your host, Bill Kelly. Good to have you with us today. Let me ask you a question just to start the show off today. Does it make sense for a provincial government, say, well, here in Ontario, for instance, a provincial government that has a debt of about $400 billion, certainly not enough family doctors to go around. We know that to be the case. That's been going on for years now. Uh, overcrowded classrooms, not enough resources for teachers to, to teach our kids. That's still happening here in Ontario. And certainly there's no affordable housing. You just need to look at the tent encampments around the, the, the cities and around the province, for that matter, to understand that we got a problem there. Does it make sense for a government facing these crises to actually say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you all 200 bucks. That should make you all happy. And it'll be a better place. Here we are in Ontario. Does it really make financial sense and economic sense for that to happen? Now, common sense and, and conventional wisdom says absolutely not. You've got problems that you have to fix. Well, <laughs> that doesn't seem to resonate with Doug Ford uh, because the premier has announced that he's notwithstanding all this, he's going ahead with this. He's going to hand out $200 checks to Ontarians. And by the way, I mean everybody in Ontario. I get a check. You get a check. Uh, somebody who's making a million dollars in this province, they get a check. Uh, they don't don't need it, but they're going to get one anyway. That's that's the way they're looking at this right now. Uh, and the, the thing, I guess, that really galls me and an awful lot of other people is the motivation for this. I mean, 200 bucks in your hand it may sound like a, a great idea for some people, but it's the timing, I think, that we have to question here as well. Uh, because the, the people I've talked to that, that follow politics in this province on a, on a regular basis of saying, look, at this this kind of stinks for a whole lot of different reasons because they anticipate that the checks are going to be out probably in early 2025, which they tell us is probably just around the time that the premier is going to call a snap election in 2025. So it's basically, oh, look, honey, I got a check in the mail from the government. Oh, there's an election. Hey, we should vote for them because they give us money. What a great idea. And of course, it's a bribe. And and now I, I I've got to be cautious when I use words like that because I know that that some people, especially in the opposition side, have said that there's nothing more than a political bribe. And and the premier, of course, is incensed when he hears accusations like this. But premier, if it walks like a duck, and talks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, draw your own conclusions. See, here's the problem: the government wants us to think that they're doing such a great job managing the province's finances, that this is found money and they want to give it to us. But that is wrong for so many different reasons. First of all, contrary to what they may think, or at least what they're telling us anyway, the Ford government's not doing a very good job with Ontario's finances. The provincial debt, as we mentioned, is ballooned to $400 billion. It's never been that high before. And government spending, government spending is so high right now that they're actually making the previous uh, win government, the Liberal government, Looked like they were frugal. I mean, they're just spending and spending and spending. The problem is most Ontario pay, ta taxpayers really don't pay much attention to this. I mean, we've, we're busy people. We've got our own lives. There are things that are on our minds these days. And there seems to be an attitude that's prevalent these days, not just here in Ontario, but in other jurisdictions too. If it's not having a direct impact on me, I'm not paying much attention to it. You know, if you own a home right now or you have a rental property, an apartment that you've been in for a while, yeah, you've got some challenges and interest rates, et cetera. But, you know, you've got a roof over your head. So when you hear things about a housing crisis, you figure, well, that doesn't really impact me. But it does. It does, not just for financial reasons either. Lack of affordable housing, of course, is is one of the main reasons why you, you see many more of these tent encampments. And you see them downtown, of course, in city parks. But you see them now in neighborhood parks and community parks. And people are getting incensed by this. Get rid of these things. We don't want our kids exposed to that sort of thing. Well, there's no place for these people to go. We don't have enough accommodation for them. And and to that end, most of us don't see the overcrowding and staffing problems in our hospitals, but that's still going on. Uh, we don't see the problems with long-term care facilities. But if you or a loved one have to go to a hospital for some reason, or uh, you've got an elderly relative who's frail and, and in need of, of assistance, and they have to go to a long-term care facility, and they have to get shuttled off 20 or 30 kilometers away from home because that's where the government says they should go, then all of a sudden these problems hit you in the face. 
And it's, it's one of these things that we just don't see it until we're faced with it. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what's the government going to do about it? Well, the first thing they do about it is, of course, shift the blame. I mean, every government does that, right? Oh, they, you think we're bad? Well, we're not bad, but look at the previous government. They were worse. They did a lousy job managing the economy. Well, yeah, they did, but we booted them out. That's why you're in power and they're not. And you, the Ford government, you made promises to us. You said you were going to be better. You said you were going to be more fiscally responsible. And the numbers just don't seem to bear that out. And that's the frustration here. And look, I, I get where the government's going here, too, but they probably are going to call an early election. And money is money, right? I mean, who doesn't want to get a check from the government? Hey, let's, you know, let's, hey, let's go spend it. 200 bucks, you could probably eat steak instead of hamburger for a day or two. But that's, that's, that's one thing. But the other element to consider here, it's not free money. It's our money that they're giving back to us right now. Instead of using that money to fix our health care system, to help to build homes and, and to improve the quality of life here. That's what we hired them to do. And it's going to cost money to do that. We get that. That's why we pay taxes. But, you know, giving us 200 bucks is not going to solve the housing crisis. It's not going to give us better health care. So put this in context, okay? And enjoy your $200 because it's going to happen. They're a majority government and they're going to send this stuff out here. But the next time that you want to complain about intrusive or unsafe tent encampments in your neighborhood, or you have a long wait at a hospital or to go see a surgeon or whatever the case may be, maybe, just maybe, you'll consider that $3 billion that the Ford government is giving away to you and me and everybody else, 200 bucks at a time, might be doing a whole lot more good if the government used it to fix some of the problems that they just seem to be kicking down the road time and time again. Think about it. That's it for the podcast today. Thanks, as always, for uh, listening and for watching. Uh, you can catch us, of course, on Substack, on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, if you're on YouTube, and we appreciate that, uh, don't forget to click on the notification bell to share with others. Lots more coming up as uh, we follow this story and many others here. Always enjoy your feedback and look forward to that in the days and weeks ahead as you uh, read the podcast and listen to it time and time again. Until next time, I'm Bill Kelly. Stay in touch and stay informed. Brought to you by Wizens Law, personal injury lawyers. Listen, you didn't choose to get injured, but you can choose the right lawyer. Wizens Law, 905-522-1102 or wizenslaw.com.